everyone and welcome to the May edition of the Farmer Supply Association Agriculture Report. I'm Randy Kopechka, agronomist with Farmer Supply Association. Well, today I want to give an update on the rice situation uh, around the county and around the farmer supply area. We're going to talk mainly about rice today and we'll talk a little bit more in generalities towards the end, but I want to focus on what's going on with rice first. Uh, first, just talking about planting progress and you know, we started, we talked about last program, we started about April 5th and, and made off and on progress and it's been more off than on here as we've gotten into May. So uh, looking at the state crop report, they say statewide we're about 77% planted as of uh, Monday, I guess May the uh, 10th. But uh, North Arkansas is usually a little behind that report and I think that's where we're at right now. I think we're less than that. I think we're gonna have you know a decent amount of acres not planted this year probably with, uh, we're taping on the 13th and next week looks totally wet. Some areas are, are totally wet right now. So we're gonna run short on rice acres, I think, and it's all said and done at the end. But uh, you know, talking about lake planting, we'll plant, most guys will plant till about the 25th of April. That's kind of the cutoff date. But looking at the forecast for next week, starting about the 17th of May and all that week looks, they're forecasting about two to three inches of rain. So if that happens, we're not gonna plant. Some of this rice is definitely gonna go unplanted. So that's where we're at. Talking about late planting, I guess the main question I get when we talk about late planting is just variety selection. Some varieties do better planted late than others. The university has a great, uh, testing program where they test varieties at different uh, uh, planting dates and, and see how they drop off as planting goes on. So they've got some great data on that. In general, the hybrids hold up better. Uh, looking at the last two years data, this is Stuttgart, so it's a little different than here, but I think the relative differences are pretty important. Uh, you know, as we would expect, the hybrids to do better, especially 753 being the top one. Uh, 753 uh, holds up to about 89% of its yield potential when planted on May the 17th. CLM04, a non-hybrid, good to see this here. CLM04 is right behind at 88% of its potential uh, planted on uh, May 17th. Drops off from there, uh, Jupiter, again, a conventional variety, but we've always known that Jupiter holds up good at, you know, as a conventional medium grain, 87% of its potential at the uh, 17th of May, and also 7521 at 87%. The bad thing about Jupiter, you know, it's a little longer season, has a long dry down. So even though you've got that yield potential, you always have that potential of not har not maturing out like you want it to before harvest. CLL 16, 86%, Diamond 85%, then it drops off quite a bit with a couple of other varieties. Titan, another medium grain, but it does not hold up as well as the Jupiter and the CLM 04. 78% of its potential there on May 17th. And CLL 15, a variety we had some problems with last year, but with the inconsistence, it was 77% on uh, May 17th. So uh, you can see maybe that's part of the reason we had some issues with it last year, along with uh, some potash deficiency and uh, some disease issues. So again, the hybrids hold up best, but you've also got CLM 04, Jupiter up in that area too, that hold up pretty well. So think about that when we're thinking about uh, planting dates for these later plantings. Next up, uh, weed control. You know, I've I talk about this every year. When we look at weed control, we want to keep those residuals active, keep that grass from ever coming up. So that's still the name of the game. Whether you've got rice that's been planted in early April, whether you're planting rice now, you've got to keep those residuals active. So that's still the name of the game, whether it's early planting, late planting, whatever the case may be. So, you know, keep that in mind. You know, we've got several residuals. Command, Sharpen, Facet, Bolero, and then some combination products like Rice One and Obey. Just want to touch on some strengths of these uh, particular herbicides. Command, of course, is just a, you know, a fairly economical, broad spectrum grass control herbicide, kind of the basis for our weed control program. Sharpen is something we put in there if we have a history of uh, rice flat sedge or, annual, or other annual sedges. We need to get that three ounces of Sharpen out there to really help pre-emerge on these weeds. Facet. Pretty good, uh, especially broadleaf signal grass control. Usually barnyard grass, although we see some resistance issues with barnyard grass. Another strength of facet is the black seeded weeds. Uh, Morning Glory, Coffee Bean Indigo, it's very good on those, both uh, as a pre and as a post boast. So it's a good situation for facet. Bolero is something we need to be using more and I'm guilty of not uh, maybe recommending as much as I ought to. 
but it's got good barnyard grass activity, good sprinkle top activity, and very good aquatic activity. So, you know, try to keep Bolero in mind as well. Prowl, just a very economical broad spectrum grass herbicide. Not crazy about it standalone. I kind of like it mixed with other things, but Prowl for its price here can give you some good grass control, so keep that in mind. Got some combination products. Rice One is a combination of uh, Command and Prowl. Obey is a combination of uh, Command and Facet. So let's keep those in mind as good options as well. Of course, this doesn't count a new path, uh, you know, in the, in the Clearfield system, preface in the uh, full page system as well. Go to post-emerge weed control when we don't control our grasses with these pre's. Uh, a few options, not as many as we used to have. Rice Star is kind of the go-to one, has good broad spectrum grass control, so that's probably my number, number one uh, herbicide most people go to for this. Clencher is something we've always kind of just delegated to a salvage situation, but it doesn't have to be that way. Clencher can give you some good activity. Uh, it's not good on crabgrass, but good on, uh, you know, gives you some good activity on barnyard grass and signal grass and sprinkle top. So keep clencher in mind when you got good moisture conditions. It doesn't have to be a post-flood salvage situation. It can be a player in our pre-emerge, uh, pre-flood, uh, not pre-emerge, but in our pre-flood -pre situations when we're trying to control some grass. Regimen and grasp, they're both pretty good barnyard grass materials. If you're not, don't have ALS resistance. So those are a couple of pretty good options for barnyard grass there. So we're kind of running short on post-emerge grass herbicides just because, you know, of the resistance and other application issues. Keep in mind, a Provisia, if you're in the Provisia system as well, and also New Path is a post-emerge material in the, uh, and also, you know, uh, Postscript in the, uh, and uh, Preface in the uh, New Path situation, the Clearfield program. <clears throat> Looking at some of the other weeds, uh, non-grass weeds, yellow nut sedge, of course, you know, everybody knows the drill on this, Permit Plus and Gamut are our go-to herbicides in that situation. Annual sedge, flat sedge, you know, any of those uh, annual sedges, we've got several choices there if we don't control those pre-emerge. Uh, probably propanil by itself is a pretty good material. Propanil combinations are even better, like propanil and, and bolero, also propanil and basagran can be very good uh, post-emerge uh, with the annual sedges. Also loint, you know, if you can use loint safely, loint's an outstanding annual sedge material, so keep that in mind. Uh, our black seeded weeds, Indigo Morning Glory Coffee Bean, uh, Facet's got good activity on all these. Uh, Stam, our propanil, and Grandstand's very good on these. And also, again, loint, if you can use loint, it's very good on the black seeds as well. Looking at pre-flood nitrogen timing, that's gonna be one of the next big things we worry about. We want to get that fertilizer on dry ground, uh, you know, before flooding. Uh, we, some varieties we have more time with than others, and I think we don't realize that sometimes. That these, you know, if you look at your DD50 program, and I sure would like to see more people using that, it'll give you some good ideas on which varieties, you know, maybe we need to get fertilized up pretty quick and be really watching. And some other ones we've got some time to play with, maybe a week to, or more to, you know, to play around and get dry ground before we start losing yield potential, and that uh, that drop off is pretty quick once we get to these certain dates. We need to get this fertilizer activated by these dates. I ran a ran some DD50s for a 428 emergence on some uh, different varieties. 753 that came up on 428. We need to have that fertilizer activated by 531. But then it goes you know, longer periods for that. Getting down to like some of the medium grains, Titan, uh, Jupiter, and uh, CLM04. Those varieties, we got some time to play with. So remember that, you know, you don't necessarily have to push things and maybe put it on to some situations that aren't perfect or kind of a little bit wet. So we need to, in those situations, we can wait and try to get dry ground. So again, a Titan would be uh, June 7th if it emerged on 428. Jupiter would be June 10th if it emerged on 428. And CLM04, you got a, uh, all the way to the 11th of June to get that fertilizer activated before you start losing yield potential. So you can see 11 day difference between uh, Rystec 753 and CLM04 to get that fertilizer out there and activate it. So again, love to see more people running the DD50. You can do it on your phone. I mean, it's real simple nowadays to do. So, if, you know, keep that in mind, you know, if you're really wanting to fine tune your dates that you need to get that pre-flood fertilizer out there by. As we finish out the program, I want to talk about uh, ryegrass control. And this is a problem that's occurring in many of our crops. We're starting to see this 
every spring as we go to plant or after planting, we're seeing these ryegrass infestations. And much like in this field, on the edge of the field where it's kind of come over from, you know, maybe a road or a ditch or something, and it's becoming more and more of an issue. You know, in past years, I always considered it cosmetic, you know, just a few plants here or there. You know, it didn't look good, but it really didn't hurt anything. And this field isn't really that bad here, but I'm starting to see more and more fields where we're seeing pretty heavy infestations of ryegrass on the side of the field. And, you know, it's one of those things we've got to start addressing. You know, it's not cosmetic anymore in some of these fields, and it's going to get worse and worse if we don't start addressing it. So there's really about three different things we can do in regard to ryegrass. They've all got to be done earlier than what we've been doing. You know, what we've been doing with ryegrass is we see it get big, and we say, oh, no, there's ryegrass out there. What are we going to do about it? And generally at that point, there's not much left you can do. But uh, there are really three things we can do. Again, they've all got to be done earlier than anything we've done in the past. We need to consider pre-emerge herbicides. Uh, this is something we never think about <laughs> that much as far as, uh, as far as things to go on in the fall is getting a pre-emerge herbicide out there. But that, just like in our, in our spring and summer times, ever keeping the weeds from coming up is the best way of controlling them. So that's what we need to do with this ryegrass. There's about three options uh, as far as grass herbicides that you might consider. Uh, Dual, Zidua, and Command are all pretty effective on ryegrass. But you've got to keep in mind what your following crop is going to be. You know, how much time have you got to, for that herbicide to lay out there before, you know, it, it plays out and, and you can safely plant another crop. So we've got to keep those plant backs in mind and the crop we're going to grow in mind. But, you know, again, Command, uh, Dual, Zidua are all possibilities. So keep that in mind and get with me or, or whoever your advisor is, you know, next fall and think about making some of these applications in September or October. You know, preferably you've worked the ground and you can put that herbicide on work ground. But I think even in some of our ground that's been harvested, as long as there's not too heavy of a uh, stubble cover or something like that, we could probably still get some activity out of these uh, pre-emerged herbicides. Second and third thing are post-emerge applications. Uh, first, uh, select or generic select. The product we sell is called uh, Section 3 through Farmer Supply. Uh, you want to get it out there for earlier than what we're seeing out here. We want to get out there while the weeds are still smaller. And plus, we've got to consider our plant backs. If you're going to plant corn or rice, you've got a 30-day plant back. And believe me, it's very real. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you do want to use uh, the Colethodum or Select product, Section 3, in the spring to control them, we've got to get that done a minimum of 30 days before we're going to plant and preferably quite a bit more than that while these weeds are still small and more controllable. So that's another option. If we get past that and we still haven't controlled them, then we're looking at probably some gramoxone applications. Usually it's going to take two gramoxone applications, so it's going to be timely, it's going to take time, it's going to take more money, so we want to try to control it before that. But if we get to that point and we want to do something, two applications of gramoxone, and preferably, especially if you're planting beans or corn, you could put a PS2 inhibitor such as metribuzin or atrazine in with that gramoxone, makes it work a lot better. So uh, again, that's what we can think about as the, uh, as the uh, ryegrass gets bigger and we're looking for a last resort to try to control it. And again, uh, once you get past that, there's really not much you can do. You just live with it. Of course, it eventually dies out when it gets hot. But again, we're getting to the point this is getting to be such heavy infestations in places. We've got to do something a lot earlier than what we've been doing. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Again, just uh, you know, sporadic planting progress and hopefully things will get consistently warm and we'll get this crop planted and be off to a good start when we talk to you in June. Uh, this has been Randy Klopetska with your Farmers Supply Association Agri Report for May.